Well, how's it going this morning? We do a little work on the FRG7 here. Actually, this is a uh, second one I got a hold of. And I'm just going to uh, place a few caps here. These, these caps right, right here. Right there. And there we go. Right there. These are kind of the main filter caps in the thing. Originally they were 1000 microfarad at, well the, the book says like 25 volt, I believe, or 15 volt or something kind of weird. These are 1000 at 25 volt, and they're all hooked up here. All the negatives come on this little T. This is the kind of the IF audio board here. And this is the only part of the uh, receiver that actually has any caps. I've already replaced one. This is a cap that actually technically goes across the uh, signal level meter. Originally it had kind of a, a long axial cap, and this is the only cap I had. I wasn't going to order a special cap just for this. A little heat shrink, as you can see there. And it's good to go. That's a 100 microfarad. I think it was it. I think originally it was like 25 volt or something, and I put a 63 volt one in there. It'll never ever go bad from now on. I should bake this thing in an oven. So we'll just. These are the three main filter caps. We'll just get the babies out of there. We use the solder sucker, the solder bolt. You can do a couple different, you know, you can do this a couple different ways. Make sure the solder bolt seems a little plugged up today. screws from that, you just put a couple drops right down in there. Screw the barrel. Usually I clean this out after each time I use it. Apparently I didn't do so good last time. Yeah, it's a horrible shape. Needs a good cleaning. A little alcohol would really be more appropriate. Anyway, you just heat these pads and uh, cock the end. Cock the solder pole, wait till it gets good and warm and the solder all melts and just get it right down in there and vacuum it right up. Sometimes you gotta hit this a couple times. Actually lately I've been using solder wick that seems to work a little bit better on these types of things. but. Uh, it's kind of potato potato. Just merely go about your way. And there are three of these big caps in there. These are probably all okay. Although I've noticed on some of these that when you uh, take these caps out, some of the values of these have actually gone up. They say a thousand microfarad, and they've gone up to like twelve hundred or thirteen hundred. That's kind of a warning, Bill. There's something bad going on there. I don't know exactly what it is. I have a couple of theories, but anytime I see those kind of caps in there, I usually chase them out of there. I got some new uh, shiny new Nichicon caps. These are twelve hundred. Just a tiny bit more capacity, 50 volt. I got those for two reasons. A, the higher voltage will stand up a little bit better. These have a higher temperature rating. These are rated at 105 degrees centigrade. And uh, these fit new caps nowadays are pretty small and they don't necessarily fit the bill so much anymore. Just flip 
this up. Here they are here. Just kind of wiggle them around a little bit, see if they're loose. They don't appear to be loose, but we can just touch them with the soldering iron and they'll just literally fall out. You'll have to remember which way the polarity was on these, but it's not too hard to figure out. Now some of these might have a, like this one here, there may be a little glue underneath there. This one, this brown one is coming out. And it appears to not be glued in there. It's just being stubborn. This is actually a pretty new cap. But it's a thousand at 50 volt. Yeah. We'll just bump up a little bit. And since I don't know when that was put in there, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. You can see under there, see that brown, that kind of kind of taffy colored. That's the glue that holds these in. One thing you can do to dissolve that is use acetone, but be a little bit careful how you do that. I've been very lucky and nothing underneath there has ever, other than the glue, has ever gotten dissolved. The other thing you can do is just, you can just put a little bit of acetone on a Q-tip. See, there's that, there's that glue right there. And... I don't know, I don't bother very much gluing these back in. If you want to glue them back in, I suggest you use some, there's some good grades of RTV. Um, there are some that are aquarium grade and they don't have that vinegary smell and they don't tend to corrode things so much. Now if you look on here, you can see the pluses and the minuses here, so you're doing okay. There's three of them there. So that one goes pluses down on that one. Actually all the minuses are kind of grouped in a little triangle there. Here we go. The other thing to remember too is typically the uh, long leads are positive on these. So when you look in here, all the short leaves should be kind of glumped up. Now I'm going to use some solder. My, the solder I've got here has a tiny, it's lead with tin, and it has a tiny bit of silver in it. It takes a little more heat, but I find that it works really well and does a spectacular job. Just heat the junction there of the cap and the lead and kind of just get a nice little puddle going there. And we're just actually we're just kind of tacking these in just for now. There we go. I'm going to flip this on its back so I can get a better look at it. Usually what I do is I reach underneath there, make sure those like that one isn't seated all the way. Sometimes they don't seat just perfect. So we're going to heat that little pad, push up. That one's the same way. And that one. Not too bad. I'm just going to go ahead and finish that up. Again, you kind of heat the junction of the pad and the lead. I actually touch the lead a little bit with the solder. You can bend these over if you want, it won't hurt anything. And just make sure they're good and soldered in there. 
I let the heat from the soldering iron go up that lead and then let the lead melt it. Make sure that the thing is good and soldered. Okay, so you got that done. Now you just need some nice side cutters to cut the leads back. I tend to leave a little bit of the lead there, and I also tend to hold on to these when they get clipped. That way they don't fly across the room and put somebody's eye out. Yeah, yeah. Give her a nice looking over, and there's just a little bit of extra lead there. There's enough for a uh, clip lead or an oscilloscope probe to grab onto. If you cut them flush, then uh, they, there's nothing for them to hook up to. And these old caps look pretty good still. Like I said, this one appears to be a replacement. So there you go. That's just a kind of a quick sample of what you'll need to do on the FRG. There's about, what is there, about 14 caps? 14 or 15, I can never remember. Most of them are pretty small. And just merrily go about your way. There's a few in some tough places in here. There's some that are under some of this wiring, but if you scooch it out of the way, it won't be a big deal. You look on here, you know, like there. There's another replacement cap, and there's another one there. Okay, somebody's done a little work. Sometimes these little mylar caps blister and break too. But all the electrolytics are on this board. Just take your time, do a few at a time. Yeah, it's no big hurry. You can do a few and then test the radio. That way if you make a mistake, you've got a pretty good chance of backing up a little bit. And kind of kind of watch what you're doing there. Uh, if it looks like something that the that you get done, if it looks like something the factory has done, let's see you did a pretty good job. That doesn't look too bad, does it? Anyway, there you go. Here's how to get started. If you have any questions, just leave a little note down on the bottom. Or have a comment. No problem. Anyway, have a groovy day. Take it easy.